Let's welcome in our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William. Good morning, Rob. As always, it's great to be here. I noticed that you are uh, flanked by uh, two lovely boxes of, uh, of your favorite food. Yeah. Where are yours, Rob? Right now, they're with you. <laughs> Where are they going to stay, Rob? <laughs> right now, with you. <laughs> and I did not bring them in. I'm sure you'll give credit in a couple of minutes where they came from. And let's also but say... But she placed them in the right place. <laughs> she did. <laughs> let's also say good morning to Delegate uh, Michael Height. Michael. Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you as well. And Thank Michael here. and I share, the badge and I share a box of donuts. Yeah. I don't know how much Sharon is going on. <laughs> well, he's got his hand across both boxes. <laughs> on the top. On the yeah. top. <laughs> but if you look at the one that's close to you, Mike, it's half empty now. I know. <laughs> you, started, you started quick. <laughs> now, but Bill's not admitting who ate the half, though. <laughs> no, no, no. We, I have uh, another box over here that I've, I've been working on, but Mike has this one. He's, he's done a good job uh-huh. eating half of it. So. I wonder we, if he's the same way at home. Bonnie, get your hands off this. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you go better to the right donut box or to the left donut box, Bill? Come on, Rob, it's a donut box. It doesn't make any difference. We can go either hand. He, he's got two hands. <laughs> Ambidextrous. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. Uh, we'll wake you from your sugar coma in about two hours. Um, yeah. yeah. Does the Tesla drive fine on its own? Can you go to sleep in a sugar coma and need, get home okay? Need sugar. Need sugar. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's say good morning to our first guest, uh, candidate for the House of Delegates, Tammy Hess, out of the 91st. This is the seat currently held by Delegate Don Forst. She is one of three in the Republican primary, along with Joseph DeSoto, Dr. Joe. Tammy, good morning. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And Great thanks for the donuts. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Well, whoever got to you, was smart. They, you know, whoever was giving you advice in your campaign, yeah. obviously they're working and making their money. I pay attention to the details. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> that's, that's a smart person right there. Now, you'll get questions regardless, but if you get donuts or sweets, you get easy questions. Oh, I don't mind yeah. the hard ones. That makes it all the worthwhile. Uh, Tammy, let's talk about your decision to run for office. What ultimately sparked your motivation to seek this seat? To be completely honest, um, I, I noticed over the last few years that there was a lack of representation for the true uh, base of our district. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of hardworking residents there that are primarily farmers. Um, there hasn't been a lot of money brought back uh, for those people, and they're being taxed constantly and i don't know about you guys but i live paycheck to paycheck and all of my constituents do too or the Mm -hmm. majority of them and it's just not fair that they're not being represented to try to keep some of that money in their pocket okay fair enough tell us the tammy has story and what brought you to this point oh lord um well i'm born and raised in the arden area um went to high school muscleman graduated in 97 joined the fire department the very next day, (laughs) Um, spent 15 years uh, between multiple departments in Berkeley County, helped open one in Jefferson County. Um, Life happens, ended up a single mom, uh, moved back to the Bunker Hill area um, to be closer to my family for my kids. raised my two girls who my youngest will be graduating in like two weeks congrats um she's committed to marshall Um, but then i got involved in politics in 08 and helped with multiple other candidates campaigns saw you know the good that was being done saw some of the things that were not so great that was being done and i've always wanted to be a part of that Mm -hmm. but because of being a single mom and having my kids in school and I was very active in PTA, their sports, um, different groups and extracurricular activities. I didn't have the time to go to Charleston. Um, So I wanted to wait until after that commitment with them kind of kind of relaxed a little and now's the opportunity. So it just kind of fell into place for me. And by profession now, you are a real estate agent? A real estate agent, real estate photographer, graphic design, video production. Yeah, I'm like a Swiss Army knife. All of the above. Yeah. Right. You mentioned you worked on some other folks' campaigns. Uh, any names that you care to share? 
Um, I was actually the state field director for uh, Tom Willis's U.S. Senate campaign. Okay. Um, I've helped Eric Householder in, like, years and years ago. Um, Larry Faircloth, um, Mike Falk, a few others. Okay, very good. Uh, now, you said uh, the current representation is not reflective of the base of the community of the 91st. What sorts of things are you referring to there? I feel that you can't represent a group of people if you've never had their struggles. And I struggle like the constituents in the 91st do. Um, so th that's why I say I don't feel it's being truly represented. It, it's not particularly that he's not doing his job mm -hmm. um, because he has, you know, voted on some things that were that were good. Um, but to really, truly uh, see the struggles um, from day to day. I don't think he has a grasp on, on that. And like I said, if he doesn't live that life or hasn't experienced that life, then you can't. You you can't understand it. Bill? Yeah, what about your other opponent? There are three of you in the race, uh, Don Force, uh, Joe DeSoto, and, of course, yourself. You've talked to, uh, talked about uh, Don Force. You've not mentioned Joe DeSoto. I don't know him. I've never met him. I've multiple candidate forums I've never even spoke to him okay. um, I just I don't think that he <laughs> um, I just don't think he's a good fit for our our community besides being a good fit what specifically would you bring uh, uh, to the office that Don and Joe will not bring I feel I'm a little more level-headed um, but I do have the ability to stand up when it's necessary and, and tell somebody um, when they're doing wrong um, or when they're not focusing on the best interests of the whole. Um, I, I don't think that <clears throat> passing legislation that's only going to benef benefit a small number of the community members is a good idea. It, it's you can't make everybody happy but you have to be able to look at things and be able to find out what's going to benefit the most amount do you have a specific bill that you would uh, that you would introduce there's a few topics um, that I've been doing some research and stuff on um, bear with me sure thank you Tom excuse me allergy season um i think that you know continuing to look at how we can relieve some of that tax uh, burden and and better ways to offset what is being taken from the community in tax dollars um, so that we can get those back into the pockets is probably the best um, and like I said I'm still got to do some more research to find out what would be the best uh, way to do that sure Mike so I, I'm, I'm going to push back a little bit because mm -hmm. as a legislator, I work mm -hmm. with Don um, and and I see the things that he's doing um, in in Charleston um, for his for his constituents and for the state of West Virginia. Uh, and from what I'm seeing, a lot of it's positive. However, perception is reality, especially in politics. Mm -hmm. And if the people of the 91st are not seeing what he's doing, or if he's not letting them know what he's doing, then, you know, well, shame on him. Um, but sometimes it's difficult as legislators to come back and let your constituents know exactly what you're doing for your particular district. So in what ways should he or should you, if you are elected to that position, let your constituents know exactly what you're doing to help them or to help West Virginia in, in, in retrospect or, or by way of helping them, helping uh, West Virginia? I know a lot of people in Charleston. I've spent a lot of time down there over the years. Um, and the reason that I say I don't see it mm -hmm. is because there's a lot of people in Charleston that don't even know who Don Forrest is. <laughs> 
And it, I've mentioned the name to people uh, over the last few years. Hey, what do you think of our, our current delegate? You know, he's, what do you think of how he's representing us? And they're like, who's that? Who are these people that you're talking about, Tammy? Just voters, um, voters in general, and um, like family members, neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, because I've, I've put a lot of thought into running for this. And so I've, like I said before, it's always been in the back of my mind to do it. Um, so I've, I've kind of followed along, so well, but, to speak. But let me, but, let, me yeah, pull, let me push but, back kind well, of on I, my, I, yeah. I want to answer but, his question, yeah, though. I know. But is it important that the people in Charleston know who he is? No. As much as it is the people in the 91st knows what he's doing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree with what you're saying. And if people in his district doesn't even know who he is, and the people in Charleston didn't know who he is, then who is he? Well, that's definitely but, a problem. If he's if if they're if they're political in nature, if they if they delve into politics and they don't know who their their delegate is, that's definitely a problem, um, and they should know. So absolutely. And the way that I would um, address the community and keep them informed of what's going on is, yeah, social media is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do social media management for a lot of real estate agents and a lot of businesses and, of course, for myself. Um, so that would be one avenue of keeping the public informed. Um, but it, it, there's other ways um, that you know, newspaper, radio, TV, um, during election season, we're all sending out to fly. Well, I'm not, but you know, a lot of candidates send out flyers. They mm -hmm. send out sure. the postcards and things. Why not do that when it's not election season? I, I well, it's costly. <laughs> well, I, I understand there's cost involved, but if if we're really here to represent our community, mm -hmm. then why not put in the extra effort? Okay. Let me kind of pick up on that. How many town hall meetings has the current delegate held? None that I'm aware. Okay. And uh, uh, this, I know other delegates, I'll go back to the years of John Overton. John Overton was uh, very conscientious holding a town hall meeting on a regular basis. Yeah, he did. Admittedly, you do not have overflowing crowds, but it's the message, the image that's put through. Mm -hmm. Tammy, let me ask you in regards to your comment earlier about bringing things back to the district from Charleston. What specifically would you as a delegate work to bring back to the area that you were mentioning before that you said was needed? I, our roads in South Berkeley, some of them are absolutely terrible. I thought I was going to lose my car while I was out door knocking uh, a week and a half ago. I, I, I was looking for a particular address, and I hit this gigantic pothole, and I drive an SUV, <laughs> and I thought it was going to bounce me right out of the seat. Um, I, I feel like our... Our roads need to be given some attention. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a community in Inwood that um, they used to have two access points um, to the development, mm -hmm. and they only have one now. And I feel that because of the age of that community, it, it's huge safety hazards. What happened to the other one? Um, it was shut down by the railroad mm -hmm. because of... Uh, I guess um, a disagreement on who needed to be maintaining it? maintaining and um, securing for safety. Okay. Um, yeah. Because of the railroad itself, there wasn't like the bars going down, mm -hmm. just the flashing lights. Mm -hmm. um, and what else would you like to see addressed besides roads in the community, if anything? Um, I, our water, um, our water supply is diminishing, um, and the quality of the water is not very great um, I know you've had a couple guests on this week that have talked about the the area water and uh, when Mr. Skinner was here um, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the week I actually looked at the website that he had mentioned and I, I was blown away by the numbers that I saw on there you're talking and, about the PFAS regulations yeah and um, with the number of other contaminants that are in the water supply locally the levels of those contaminants that scares me um, I you know, Aaron Brockovich is one of my favorite movies, mm -hmm. and if that can happen somewhere else, what's preventing it from happening here? And 
we've known about these things for several years. Yes, there's been things put into place um, to remediate those chemicals, but the exposure has already happened. And I, I just think but, that we should address m to keep it from being exposed more. But there's a, you, you sent in a couple of different messages. One, you said, I uh, want to reduce taxes, eliminate the uh, the tax burden. The other saying, we got to improve water supply. We've got to improve research to clean the water. Uh, these things cost money. And, and, uh, and, and you get the money th uh, through the tax dollars. That's the only way you get the money. They, there's research going on all across the country in different colleges and research centers, and I've I've found a lot of information um, just within the last few days uh, regarding like the the drainage runoff um, acid um, the acid runoff from um, like the abandoned mines mm -hmm. and how they're reclaiming the minerals that is in that runoff and it's actually a, a huge asset um, to the state because it can be sold and used in multiple different facets now there are ways and programs and at the federal level and uh, they're they give out grants for just about anything now, is there someone in the legislation that actually researches those to see what's available? Because could be leaving money on the table. Well, yep, yeah, uh, there's always additional money, but West Virginia is one of the few states that gets a lot more from the federal government than they mm -hmm. pay in. So, oh, I, I so totally lots, agree with that. Yeah, so I think our legislators, our agencies have done a nice job mm -hmm. of tapping into the federal Yo, Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I agree with that. Tammy, we're on the Republican spectrum, because this is really what this has become in the state lately. It's not Democrats versus Republicans. It's Republicans versus Republicans. Whose team do you align with in regards to how the Republican Party has splintered since it's become a supermajority? Are you a Chamber of Commerce Republican? Are you a, a socially active, social warrior type of Republican? Somewhere in the middle? I'd say that I, depending on the topic, I, it, that's going to determine you know how hard of a stand I'll take on it. Okay, let's start with one of them. Let's let's talk about the abortion topic in West Virginia and what you would have voted for had you been in, in the legislature when some of these uh, rules were being or laws were being discussed. This is a really hard topic for it me is. to talk about. It's hard for everybody. Um, I do not feel that abortion should be used as a form of birth control, but I do feel that people forget about the mental um, that a woman goes through being forced to carry a child that she didn't want, um, and then the mental uh, damage that is done to that child if they're born. Um, it, it's sorry understandable this was a debate in the legislature and many republicans who took the stance that there should be some exceptions life of the mother uh, i think everybody agreed was an, a worthy exception but there was debate about rape incest the far right of the republican party said no exceptions the baby's life is the baby's life don't punish the baby for the sins of the person involved in creating the baby. This split the Republican Party somewhat as mm -hmm. well. And those who voted to allow exceptions for rape and incest were roasted on social media by those who believe that life begins at conception. So you <clears throat> would have allowed, you would have voted for exceptions? Absolutely. I have a personal um, experience. Between the birth of each of my children, I had cancer. I was 25 years old. Because of the treatment that I had, five months after my treatment, I found out I was expecting again. I was extremely excited. My doctors had told me if I wanted a second child, I needed to do it immediately. That pregnancy was not viable. Thank you. That pregnancy wasn't viable and I had to make a choice. It was either I 
I did what I needed to do in order to be a mom to the child that I had. Or I took a chance and not being here myself. So I decided my daughter needed a mom. So I did what I had to do. It is a decision that has plagued me since I had to make it. So I can understand from that mom's perspective of the mental It, it's a really hard topic for me to talk about. Yeah, let me understand. We've had this question raised a lot of uh, folks. But you, think, you can see firsthand the I, pain I was going to say, of a woman Tam, who's gone through it. I was going to say, Tammy has probably answered this question better than anybody I've ever heard. Be it this show or any other form. It is a tough question. You've answered the question honestly. You've answered it with emotion. I applaud you for that. That was tough. And let me ask you this, Tammy as a person, a woman specifically, who's gone through this. Most of these discussions are held by men. Most of these discussions and decisions and laws are created by men. Your thoughts as a woman looking from the sideline as these laws and rules have been created and as a woman who's trying to get into the legislature. I think everyone has good intentions, but until you're in that position, you can't say what you would do it's just like saying that if somebody attacked your loved one or you know tried to break in your house and you're for you know the like the west virginia castle law you have the right to defend your home and your property and and your family but being faced in that situation you don't know what you'd do and I didn't know what I would do until I was faced with it. So, we appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Take a take a breath. We've got a couple minutes left to get a couple of uh, more opinions from you on some of the things that are discussed regularly uh, in the legislature. The legislature has to pass a skinny budget, and they'll go back in May and fill in the blanks on some things. One of the things that needs filled in uh, is uh, Medicaid funding, and the. Uh, matter of how much of that Medicaid with funding would uh, would be. We had a guest on earlier this week who uh, just absolutely gobsmacked us with the stat that 500,000 out of the 1.8 million in West Virginia are on Medicaid funding in this state. That's nearly a quarter of the state's mm -hmm. population on Medicaid. As a legislature, a le the legislator, would you vote to fully fund Medicaid, which I'm told gets three federal dollars for every one state dollar that's put in? Or would you vote to roll that budget back somewhat? I, I don't know how educated you are on that specific topic, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. But go right ahead and take a shot at it. Again, I live it. Being a single mom, I've used Medicaid. Mm -hmm. I had to. You know, the, the job positions that I've had because of the requirements and the cost, <clears throat> small businesses can't afford to offer their their employees or staff members health care um, if they did or were nice enough to assist with it then the employees contribution part was too high and then the employee don't bring home any money so how can you live um, I I feel like with the way that DHHR is set up that people that are barely making it are not getting the support that they need the ones that are actually out there working and trying to better their situation the ones that are laying around not working not trying they're s pulling off the system and i think it's a little backwards uh where are you on the second amendment and uh, gun rights in the state of west virginia i have them i want more I have them as in firearms, uh -huh. and you'd like more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Simple, basic question. I have firearms. I like them. I want more. The state has rolled back state income taxes by about uh, a quarter percent. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, about a quarter to this point with the idea of ideally completely phasing out the state income tax. Are you in favor of that? Yes. And in regards to 
uh, the Board of Education at the state of West Virginia level. Would you like to see the State Board of Education abolished and more local control, or do you like the setup that we have right now uh, with the State Board of Education in place? There needs to be um, a state-level representative that that is the go-between between the state and the federal, um, but I think what they're getting paid is ridiculous. Um, it, it, it's astronomical amounts of money that I think could be used in different ways um, that would benefit the, the communities and the schools and the students. Um, I think local control is absolutely a, a, something that we need more of um, because taking the ability away from a, a local class teacher um, to determine how they're going to present the information that they that the students need to learn that's affecting more students than people even know um, not every child learns the same so a teacher needs to be able to have that leeway and that 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 ability to adjust the way that they teach tammy hess has been our guest here on the program candidate in the 91st the incumbent there is don force tammy go ahead and uh, take a, a moment talking to the camera and tell people why they should vote for you on uh, may 1st or may 14th for that matter well, I'm Tammy Hess. I'm running for uh, District 91 for the West Virginia House of Delegates. I am a local. Um, I know the struggles that we all face every day. And I want to be a, a representative to um, help give a voice to us. So if you would, please vote for me May 14th or early voting starts May 1st. Tammy? Thanks for coming in, and we very much appreciate your candor and your honesty in dealing with some difficult subjects, and Bill especially appreciates your donuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I appreciate even more of that, the honesty. You're very frank. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Best of luck to you. 